Okay. All right, all right, all right. It's happening. It's happening, folks. Where am I? I'm not in the chair. I'm coming back. Ha ha ha. Oh, shoot. All right. Everybody enjoying themselves out there? Hey, you know, I got an idea. I got, I got a great idea. All right, just five people watching. Excellent. So it says I've gone live, and I have indeed. Uh, hey, how about if you're enjoying this free lesson so far, go down there, see the little thumbs up, give me a like. Everybody give me a like if you're watching. Also, if you're not able to chat on the chat line here, there's, uh, it's just me and Tim it looks like so far. Uh, if you want to chat and ask me questions during the lesson, you have to subscribe. So go down in the lower right hand corner of your screen, there's a little possum. Click on that possum, a thing will come out that says subscribe, click on that and then click on the little bell So until you see little, uh, little uh, like noise lines coming off. That'll mean you're subscribed and you're going to get notifications for whenever I do these live shows. Okay, but you know what? Without further ado, let's get started. So, uh, let's see here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got Tim Murray. We got Pat Plunkett. Pat Plunkett? She's, she's learning to play the guitar. Wow, that's great. She already knows how to play the guitar. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, remember last time we were playing the tune Coming Round the Mountain. We were playing the... Uh, and that was just kind of a starter tune, but I'm going to play you a little bit of that so that you have another rendition of it on the fiddle to practice backing up. I'm going to play through it three times. You've got the chords. I'll show those to you again in a minute here. So you can do a screenshot or come back later and look at them. All right, so here we go. tune a little bit, then I'm going to give you a new tune, also in G. We're going to stay in G for a while, you know, because we got to do, I got to show you a waltz, I got to show you a jig in G, uh, maybe something else, some uh, like rag or something. So so we're going to go on after this tune, uh, come around the mountain, we're going to play Sugar in the Coffee, which I got from my buddy Bill Graves, who's no longer living, lived down in Lebanon, Missouri, a great old time musician from the Ozarks. All right, so uh, let's look at what, uh, now if you, here I'm gonna put the chords up. Uh, there are the chords. If you wanna make a screenshot, come back later when you're looking at the video, make a screenshot, print it out, whatever, have it on your phone or on your computer. Um, so let us see what we need to do to play these chords. Do, 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 do. Oh, we'll all have chicken and dumplings when she comes. Oh. So see if I, I think I tuned up, I tuned up okay. Okay, so here's how I make my G chord. Every, now this, this course assumes, whoa, this course assumes that you know all the cowboy chords. You know, you can make a G, you can make a D, you can make a C, make an F, you know, things like that. All the, all the basic chords, A. I'm not going to teach those. You can get yourself a little Mel Bay book with all those in it to, to help you out learn those. Or sit around the campfire singing those campfire songs. But now we're going to work on backing up fiddle tunes. So, so remember I said last week, I, just, I said, so this is how I make my G. You can make some of the bluegrassers like that high D in there. But I make mine like this. The reason is if I like, want to go to C, it's, this finger's already ready to go, you see. This guy here. And also, if I want to make G7, I don't have to change my finger position much. Okay, so she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Okay, 
Now, what I'm doing there, again, fiddle is all about boom, chuck, boom, chuck, and not boom, chuck, a boom. We talked about that, right? That's uh, that's kind of a, you know, if you're doing a Kingston Trio song, that's fine, but not for playing backing up fiddle tunes. It's boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. So, and I'm using a, I'm using a uh, regular flat pick here. There it is. Okay. So, uh, and I'm not letting much stick out. I'll, I'll show you this again and again. Not, and it's, I'm not really gripping it all that hard either. Uh, I can slide. You, you, if you were here, you could grab that and slide it out. I'm not, I'm not gripping it that hard because you got to let it flow, flow over the strings. So. She'll be now. I'm, what, what I'm going to do when I'm on G? I don't want to just go. She'll be coming around the mountain. Boring. Hitting that same note over again. I want to alternate the bass just like you would if you were playing bass. So she, I'm going to alternate between this note. G on the E string and the B on the A string. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Oh, you're doing good. She'll be coming round. Here comes that D chord when, when she comes. Now, what am I doing there? I'm playing the D. Now, remember, I'm using my bottom four strings. I call them the bottom because they're the low. The E, A, and D as my bass strings, right? And this is the chord. So it's like, think about the piano, you know, left hand, right hand of the piano. That's how it kind of, that's what the guitar is really trying to imitate, actually. So when I do D, I like to put, I like to put my thumb over the top and catch that E sharp, uh, F sharp, sharp, sorry, right there. Oh yeah. Okay, some, some people are saying some smart, intelligent things here. Let me just take, take a quick check. Oh yeah, there's a lot of intelligence going on. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a lot of alleged humorous me being one of them. Okay, so so now when I do my so when I do my D, you can either go so that's D open D open A, but I like this guy. Okay, so back to the beginning. She'll be coming. C, she'll be coming round. Oh, we gotta alternate the bass. I guess we could go. I don't like that. So what I do when I play C and I want to alternate the bass, some people make this chord. You know where they've got uh, which way to go here? Where they've got the they took their uh, third finger and put it up on the G on the E string and put their pinky down on the C. But I like this. It's simpler. I just walk back and forth. Okay. Back to back to the middle. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Okay, everybody, everybody good there? Everybody good there? She'll be coming. around the mountain. Now, you can go into YouTube, you know, and slow this sucker down. Uh, it's available on all the platforms, I believe, to slow down. So if you want to make that half speed or whatever, how about if I get the fiddle out one time, play through it like three times, and you see what you can do with the accompaniment. Okay? Here we go. I'm getting the fiddle out now. Here it is. Here it is. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Okay, here we go. Not too fast. I'm going to play it pretty slow.
Okay. All right. How'd you do? How'd you do? So now, you know, we're going to go on to the next because that's the nice thing about having this all on video is you don't have to get everything the first time through because you can come back and look at the video later, you know. But, you know, this, uh, these, these uh, duffer sessions I'm doing, I'm going to take, I'm doing three duffer sessions. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. I'm doing d fiddle for duffers, mandolin for duffers, guitar for duffers. They are on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 o'clock respectively. So it's fiddle on Tuesday, mandolin on Wednesday, guitar on Thursday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Half hour is all you get. But now, so I'm going to, the first four of these lessons are going to be complete and on YouTube for the whole world to look at. But after the, starting with the fifth lesson in the series, I hope you'll join me at patreon.com forward slash Charlie Walden. Let me just show you what that looks like. And for a nominal fee, less than the co cost of a double mocha frappuccino with a pump of hazelnut at your local, local Starbucks. For less than that cost per month, it's four dollars a month. You can be a patron on my Patreon channel, and all the rest of these after the fourth lesson will be available uh, to view on my Patreon channel. Now I'll still do the live broadcast, so if you're get here and get the live broadcast, that's fine. But if you want, but if you want to review them in archive, they'll only be available to patrons of my channel. So just just a little uh, information there. All right, so. Let us go on to the next tune, which is the old sugar in the coffee that I got from Bill Graves. I'm going to play you a little bit of it right now. Here we go. And I'm going to, actually, while I play it, I'm going to put the chords up, and you can kind of look at the chords. See, I wrote these crude chords down. So this is, our, this is your standard fiddle tune, folks, with an A part and a B part. And the A part repeats and the B part repeats. So it's A, A, B, B, okay? All right, so I'm going to play you a little bit of the tune. And just kind of look at that. Just listen to the tune and look at that music. Is that music? No, it's chord. Uh, it's a chord sheet. Okay. Again. players or accompanists who know the music, know the tunes as well, you know. Now, now if you're like if you're like my Pat, you know, she can hear the tune and the, while it's going while it's happening, she knows what the chords are going to be 99.9% .9 of the time. But uh, it takes a while to get to that level of uh, understanding of the music. But it's nice to get the tunes in your head then when you hear somebody playing, "Oh, that's sugar in the coffee." It goes like this. Okay, so so we, it's, again we're staying in G. We're using the same three chords, D, G, C and D. Okay. Do -do -do. sounds funny in there, doesn't it? But that's what we do in Missouri. It's the Missouri rules. So we got to go around the horn with the C chord on the second four bars. Now you don't have to, but if you're going to play down there, you do. So here we go. notes I'm using, okay? So let me get my music out here. I'm getting up on the stand so I can see. Oh, look, look what I brought. The thing with no with no chords written on That's okay. Woo! I don't need that. All right. That, I guess it's in the scanner still. Okay. but so, so if we look at the chord sheet, let's look at the chord sheet one more time and I'll play along. And so we're going to play two, we're going to play two eight measures. So see, that's eight measures. Every time you see, like, see the first G and then there's a bar line to the right of it. So that's it. 
that's the whole, that's that bar. So it's two bumps, two booms per bar, and two chucks too. So it's do do. Second bar, third bar, fourth bar. Now the C. Kind of get how to read it now. Now look, let's look, look at one other thing there. You know, I see that thing that says D7. Oh my God, that's another form of the D chord. So I'm going to give you another chord today. Because see, what I, what I want to eventually get to where is you can play the cowboy chords, but you can also play closed position chords that sound so cool. Okay, so so D7, D7 is, uh, we won't go into why it's called seven or any of that just yet. That'll be in less than 100. But so G, so D7 commonly you might make like this. So here's here's D, well, I, gotta, I don't know which way direction to move. Here's D. D7 looks like this because it's got this C natural in it. It's, it's this to this. I make that chord sometimes, but I think there's another way to make that chord. You know C? Play C, play C. Now if you take this finger, pinky finger, and you put him right on the G string on the third fret, you get this, C7, right? Well, you know, now what you got is you got a, you're covering all these notes, and I'm only playing the inside four notes, too. That's another trick you got to get on to. But I'm only playing the inside four notes. So I'm, I'm not playing this string or this string. I, I, can, I can move that now. That's, that's a movable form. Oh, my gosh. So C, C sharp, D. So C7, C sharp 7, D7. Okay, so let's try that. We'll, we'll play the second bar, second line. So let's see, let's look at that. See, we're gonna play the second line, so it's G, D. So it's three bars of G, a bar of D7, but we're gonna use that movable form. <laughs> and then we're gonna play G, C, the movable form again, and G and end up, okay, right? So make your screenshot, folks, make your screenshot. Okay. Here we go. Now you're gonna have to practice that quite a bit if you haven't done that before. So you gotta go from here to here, from here to here, and then back. So I would recommend doing that about ten thousand times. Okay, there's five. I only got nine thousand nine hundred ninety-five to go. Okay, so so dee dee dee. Oh, you know what? Now I can alternate that bass. Excuse me, I got something in my eye here. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so see, remember when I was doing this before? Alternating that bass on the C, going from, going from the third fret on the A string to the third fret on the E string. talking about. So what if I move this up? I can do that same thing here. So practice that too. You know, another thing you'll notice is on the chuck, I'm kind of choking it. In other words, I'm pressing down quickly, and then I'm kind of, really, I'm just releasing the pressure. I'm not really picking my fingers up, but I'm just, re so I get a nice sharp chuck. I could go for this, you know. Sustain, but I like that. Okay, see if any other funny things are being said. I like, I love amusing comments. I love amusing comments. Yes, many funny things are 
<laughs> oh, the Texas people, yes, down there in Missouri, yes. Well, you know, way down in Missouri where I heard this melody. See, we think Missouri's down there, you know, contrary to you Texans. We, it's down there. You know, for years, uh, I hadn't been east much. I think I'd gone to Boston once when I was a kid because my mother was from there. But, uh, but the east, I thought like the east started at Indianapolis, and I was shocked when I went to Ohio and they thought they were in the Midwest. I was really shocked. But <laughs> It's all relative, you know. Uh, okay, so where, where were we before I so rudely interrupted myself? Okay, so we're doing this. Dee -dee -doo -doo. So, uh, let's see. So, we're going to work on Sugar in the Coffee. I'm going to play it again so you have another recorded version to play against. And you're going to try to play along. I'm going to put the chords up on the screen, okay? And we'll play through it three times. Remember, each of those lines repeats. And just play along with me, you know? I'm not going to play it very fast. If you make a mistake, it's just you, you know? It's the whole no pants, no problem thing. Mistakes, I don't care. Mistakes. What are mistakes? No, nobody heard if a tree if a if a tree hits a wrong chord in the woods and nobody's there to hear it. Does anybody care? No, I don't think they do. All right, so let's sip of coffee here. I don't put sugar in my coffee, by the way. I'll tell you a little story though. Let me tell you a little story. So, you know, Pete McMahon, God bless him, he was a really gruff old guy, but I loved him. And he, I went, I was over at a fiddle contest in Paris, Missouri, one time. Uh, They're in North Central Missouri, and we went up, it was at the uh, Paris Threshers, which had been going on for decades. It's a threshing show and mule jump. If you don't know about mule jumping, that's worth a, that's worth a YouTube search. But uh, so he's having a coffee. I'm, I'm having a coffee at some little concession counter. And I didn't look which, whose was whose, you know. And I knew he put sugar in his coffee, but I didn't know how much. And like, I took one sip and like I thought I was going to get type 2 diabetes from just that one drink. I mean, there was so much sugar. And then one, the next time I got coffee with him, I watched how many scoops of sugar he put in his coffee. I think it was till the, till the spoon would stand. That's when he knew he had enough sugar in his coffee. So, man, I mean, it got a guy like sweet coffee. So, let's go back and look at this music, and I'm going to play you the tune. Here we go. Not too fast. So remember, each line repeats. That's what that little thingy at the end means. Crude, crude thingy with the two dots means. Okay. Oh, that was too fast. Sorry.
All right, so here's what we got planned for lesson three. We're still going to be on these same two tunes, still in G, uh, but we're going to all all next week's going to be all about getting from one chord to the next. In other words, little bass runs. Okay, so it's going to be about little bass runs you can use in G with two simple tunes like this, because these are pretty simple pieces of music uh, as they go. And but uh, there's a I tell you that little progression you're playing with sugar and the coffee about. 85% of the Missouri fiddle tunes, for sure, you can back up with that same progression just transposed to different keys. I mean, it's it, it, you're getting a good foundation here of, uh, of what chords to play with a lot, a lot of hoedowns. To, they all, you won't get any complaints, mostly, if you play that, that kind of lick. So, with that said, folks, uh, now if you've got any questions after the program, you want to message me, just message me at bigfiddleshow.com. Uh, oh, yeah, bigfiddleshow at gmail.com. Sorry. Sorry. And also, I'd like to say, if you add in there, hey, possum, put me on your mailing list. I'll send you my weekly newsletter with all the links to all these uh, live broadcasts we're doing here on YouTube, Pat and I. And that's about it, folks. So, as we like to say, we're clear, Bow folks. Your I'll talk to you next time. And Take to your corner. Take Join your hand circle to the lab.